really excited about tonight's video. Just going to pull up my monitor here so I can keep an eye on the live stream and make sure that it's got a good feed. Going to wait just a few minutes for y'all to get on. And then we're going to dive into a Motors Masterclass. Let's make sure everything's on. I have not got a notification that we are live. But we'll wait just a second and see. Make sure that it goes live. Electrical Code Coach. Hope you guys are well tonight. Just not seeing the live. Let me make sure. Let me make sure that we're live. It says that we're live. What's going on, JC? For some reason, it does not want to show it on my phone, but it will here in just a minute. We'll give it just a few minutes. What's going on, JC? What's going on, Ken? Appreciate you. What's up? What's up with you guys? Sunny here in California. Oh, I can't. I mean, I wish I could go to California. I'd love to go to California one time. Probably one of the states uh, that I would live in if it if it. If it maybe wasn't so crazy, I would love to live in California. Not everybody there is crazy, but but I think some of the things that may be crazy. Um, but uh, I would love it. Seems like beautiful land. Seems like a beautiful place to be. What's going on, Andreas? What's up? Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Let's make sure... For whatever reason, my phone is not wanting to show me where I am live. But that's okay as long as I can see you guys. Come by the bay. I will definitely let you know, man. We'll definitely have to get together. I'd love to come to California. For some reason, it is not wanting to pull up this motors class on this phone. I got no idea. That's a no idea right there. All right, y'all, what's going on, Orlando? So we're going to wait just a few minutes for a few of you guys to get on. Then we are going to be doing a motors master class. We're going to be talking about sizing motor conductors. We're going to talk about sizing motor short circuit ground fault protection. Excuse me. If time permits, we're going to talk about motor overload protection and how to size it. It's going to kind of be an A to Z for those four or five topics, however you want to look at it. And then this is going to be our last late night live session. So I don't know if you guys are like this. You'll set really good, healthy work boundaries and you'll stick to them for a little while and then you'll blow right past them. And then I'll find myself working. And I lately, thankfully, we've been taking some time off, but I'll find myself in these seasons where I'm working sun up to sundown, still, still doing the family thing, but I'm never disconnecting. And then I'll be like up at one o'clock in the morning this summer, have worked plenty and like shame myself and in, into mentally thinking I haven't got anything done all day. But I have to like go back and recount all the stuff. I, I don't know why, like I am addicted to the grind. I, I hate to say it, but it's absolutely true. He said, I'm locked, locked in from Trinidad and Tobago. What's going on? He said, put me in coach. What's going on, Red? He's in SoCal as well. I'm going to see if this phone, there we go, Motors Live Masterclass. i got to have my monitor. That way I can talk to you guys. That way we're good. We're locked in from Trinidad. Everybody's got good audio. If you could let me know, sounds like we do. You, usually you guys would have let me know. We're going to go ahead and get started. So this is going to be our late, our last late night live session. We are going to only be going live in the mornings. And we're probably going to go live I'm probably going to continue to do live and then maybe do a video on Fridays. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. It's going to be kind of the new fall schedule starting next week, and it might evolve into what I want it to be. The biggest thing is I want it to make the biggest impact in your life. So if going live around 6 a.m., 7 a.m. every morning before you go off to work, give you a little encouragement, a little bit of the code and a little bit of fire every day before we go out is hopefully how, because school's getting ready to start back if you've got kids, you know, things are getting ready to go back into the normal grind and summer is starting to wind down here shortly. All right, so let's go ahead and get ready to, for the lesson. I'm going to get our camera set up here. I do want to go ahead and mention tonight, since it's our last night live session, we're going to do a crazy sale on our lifetime memberships that if you buy one lifetime membership tonight, you get to give away two lifetime memberships. So there's a link to sign up. If you want to get a lifetime membership, you get to give two away to two other people. 
And if you've already got one and you want to buy one for three different people, you can buy th basically three for one and see three different people get it. You don't have to use them all at once. If you want to buy one now for one of your employees and save one for another one later, you can save them for whenever you want to use them. Just use that link and let me know that you've signed up. We're going to go ahead and get my camera set up here where you guys can see everything we got going on. And then we're going to shrink it down where I'm out of the way here. Scoop. Not too far. Last night I talked the whole night without me on the screen. I forgot that I wasn't, I forgot that I wasn't on the screen. We don't want to do that tonight. We're going to go ahead and actually start with my icebreaker questions. I love doing these questions because I love getting to know you guys. This is uh, the Electrical Exam Coach Motors Masterclass. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and I really love going live with you. The number one reason is that we get to connect on a whole different level than when I'm just talking at you during a recorded video. We get to interact in the chat. Tonight, we're going to do some... Icebreaker questions, I want you to drop them down in the comments below if you're live. If you're watching this later, maybe years down the road, you can drop them down in the comments and there's a good chance that I will see them. First icebreaker question, and just full disclosure, I do these questions when I'm in person to get to know my in-person class, but we're going to get to go know you. When's your next birthday? And what subject have you found most difficult that we've learned about so far? You may not have watched all my videos, but what's the most difficult thing for you in electrical? Is it motors? Is it solar? Is it pipe fill calculations? Is it box fill? Is it whole house? Let us know, or is it just general understanding or troubleshooting? Let us know down in the comments or in the live chat if you're doing this live. And if you're watching this video later and you're not watching it live, if you'll click that live chat button, you can see what everyone said as we were going live. You can actually watch the live, it's called the live replay. Let's go ahead and get to it. Motor conductors. When sizing normal, and I'll explain why I said that here in just a little bit. When sizing normal motor conductors, you're going to use the motor's FLC, not the FLA nameplate. Every motor is going to have a stamp on it that's going to say most likely the FLA, the full load amps. We're not going to size it based off of that. We're actually going to size it based off the FLC. Now, if the motor is stamped with the FLC, you can use that. That's okay. As long as we achieve the FLC, that's how we're going to size our motor conductors. And the FLC simply stands for full load current. FLA, which is the typical nameplate rating, stands for the full load amperes. If you have any questions while we're going through this, just drop them down in the comments and we'll get to them. All right, how do we find that FLC if it's not typically stamped on the motor? Well, we're going to talk about that here in just a little bit. We're going to learn from tables 230, or excuse me, 430.248 and 430.250. And they are on these respective pages. So I don't have the 2023 listed, but you'll have to uh, actually maybe in a 2023 book right now. But if you want to drop it down in the comments for the, for the guys and gals who are watching uh, what page numbers it's on in the 2023, if you're on that cycle, none of this stuff has changed. This is going to be the same in the 2026 and the 2020. Uh, 2029. This fundamental stuff right here is just not going to change. In my opinion, I don't believe it's like it's going to change. All right, so when we get to table 430.248, let's go over these tables. Let's see what I got. Let's go ahead and back this up. Let's go look at these tables. So everybody head to table 430.248. If you don't have a book, you can get NFPA link, and you can check it out on the digital version. Shout out to NFPA, 430.248. We're on page 332, or excuse me, three. Yeah, 332. I saw it here, but I read a different number there. I've got it right. We're on the top line right now on the screen, which is the single phase version of this table. I do want to note that even if you're on a three phase electrical system and you've only pulled two phases over to it, your FLC is going to be listed here in the single phase table. Just keep that in mind. Yes, it's a three phase motor, but it's a sing you're only pulling two phases to it. It's a single phase motor. Just keep that in mind. Even if you're on a three phase system. So when we get to table 430.248, we always read the black bold heading to make sure that we're in the right table. It says full load current in amperes for single phase alternating current motors. 
I feel great. We're in the right table. Then we're going to read our tables top to bottom, left to right, using the black bold headings to navigate the table. Starting on the far left hand side of this table is going to be the horsepower listed. Then across the top, you're going to see the different types of voltages. We have 115 volts, 200 volts, 208 volts, and 230 volts. That's why the 208 volt is listed there because if you only pull two phases over that motor, it's technically a single phase motor, but your voltage is still 208. So if we want to find out the FLC full load current of a 10 horsepower, 230 volt motor, what we're going to do is we're going to start on the left hand side of this table on the horsepower side. We're going to come down and we're going to cross over and we're going to tee off under the 230 volt motors and we're going to find that it is 50 amps. Let's see what we got, Tim, here. Well, let's look at some of the comments. Full load current, code book value. It's kind of easy. I like that full load code book value. I like that. That's pretty cool. And then we got Tim. Appreciate you, Tim. Appreciate you, Luciano. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Um, and then hello, what's going on? We got Orlando troubleshooting formulas. All right, cool. Formulas get confusing. They do. Um, but the beautiful thing about math is once we do get to formula, there is an answer. Some stuff in the code book, you're like, hmm, what are they trying to ask here? But when it comes to math, at least that there, at least there is an answer. Now let's head over to the three-phase version of this table. 430.250 says full load cor current for three-phase alternating current motors. So I feel like I'm in the right table. On the left-hand side is going to be our horsepower. And then across the top is a bunch of different types of voltages, 115, 200, 208, 230, 260, 575, 2300, and then it goes down and steps down into uh, different types of motor, synchronous type unity power factors, talking about the power factors. Over here, synchronous type unity power factor, and that's in amperes as well. We're not going to be dealing with that for our normal motor conductors or our normal motor short circuit ground fault protection or overloads. So if we wanted to know the... FLC of a seven and a half horsepower, 208 volt three phase motor. We start on the left hand side of the table. We come down until we find seven and a half horsepower. Then we're going to come across until we tee off with 208 volts and we find that value to be 24.2 amps. And that's the full load current. Now, the FLA on this motor might only be 22 amps or something like that. That's why we always use the FLC. Now, let's keep going. When we are doing normal motor conductors, we're going to multiply that FLC by 125%, and then we're going to go size our wire. It's that simple. You find your FLC in tables 430.248 or 430.250. Then you take that value, multiply it by 125%. Then we're going to go to our primary opacity table, and we're going to find a conductor of whatever terminal rating we're dealing with. Because as we learned last night, if you missed that lesson, it was an absolute, uh, we had a great time and it was a great lesson uh, about impacity and about the impacity table in about 240.4D. And when we're dealing with motors, the rules that are laid out in 240.4D do not apply. So when you're sizing motor conductors, you're going to go to your primary impacity table. And whatever the terminal list rating is, is what column you use. Even if it's a small conductor, you're still going to use the terminal rating. So it's 75 degree C terminals, you're going to go to the 75 degree C column. If it said 90 degree C terminals, you're going to go to the 90 degree C column. Uh, as long as you're using a wire that has a 90 degree C insulation. We have to keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and move on. Conductors, now here's when we get into the not normal motor conductors. Four conductors on motors that are under 1,200 RPM, that are intermittent duty, which we're going to learn about that, multi-speed motors, or high torque motors, high torque motors, you're actually going to use the nameplate FLA. Now, why on earth they switch back and forth in between the FLC and the FLA throughout all the lessons that I'm going to teach you tonight I look forward to your public input in 2026. And if you're new to my channel and you don't know what I mean when I say that, 
some things in the code are so obvious or so well pointed that we, did you know that you can actually go put public input to the NEC and get a code change made? I look forward to your public input about this. Why are we switching back and forth on some things in motors? You use the FLC as listed in the table, but on some things you're going to use the motor FLA. Just pick one. Do you want us to use the tables, the motor FLC tables, or do you want us to use the nameplate FLA? Or do you just pick one, but stop switching back and forth. It's very confusing. And is it really making that much of a difference in the install? You're causing all this cloud of confusion about when you're supposed to do it. But is it really making that much of a difference? If whether or not you use the FLC or the FLA, is it ever going to change the size wire that you use? If the answer is no, then just quit it. But that's my soapbox for today. I'm going to get off of it. But just to be very thorough, look at the screen. When sizing normal motor conductors, you will use the motor FLC, not the FLA. You're going to find those FLCs listed in table 430.248 and 430.250. If it is one of these special conditions, under 1200 RPM, intermittent duty, multi-speed, high torque, you're actually going to use the nameplate FLA. Don't ask me why they switch back and forth. How I teach my students is that if there's anything funky going on in the question, slow down and ask what's going on. Thankfully, everything that I'm teaching you is literally on two to three pages. This whole lesson tonight is on two to three pages in the code book. You don't need to memorize everything I've said. All you need to do is just realize that everything I'm teaching you is just on a couple pages, and you can go back, and we're going to do some strategic highlighting here in just a little bit. So if you want to let somebody know uh, in your house, if you want to give a shout to the husband or wife to bring you a uh, to bring you a highlighter, just go ahead and do that now. Or if you know where your highlighter's at, just go get it. I'm just joking. Because we are going to do some strategic highlighting. If you have a code book and if you have a highlighter, if not, just listen up. Let all this stuff soak in and you will be able to recall it later as needed. Like I said before, the limitations that are in... I don't even know if you guys can see that. I think it's cut off the bottom of my screen. No, it's there. It's just time delayed. The limitations that are in 240.4D do not apply to motors. So the 15 amp uh, circuit for the 14 gauge wire, the 20 amp circuit for the 12 gauge wire, and the 30 amp circuit for the 10 gauge wire, those rules don't apply for motors. You can just size it based off the terminal rating. In the absence of a terminal rating, you would default to the rules 100 amps or less. You would put it on 60 degree C column, 101 amps or more. You're going to use the 75. But friends, let me tell you something. When you're out in the real world, there is always a terminal rating, period. Unless you're not landing on any terminals, then you can go, then you can deal with it from there. Let's go ahead and do some practice questions here. That's how I like to teach. I blow your mind with the concept and then I bring it back together with actual application. What size copper conductors would you select for a three horsepower, 208 volt, three phase motor that has an FLA nameplate rating of nine amps terminating to 75 degree C terminals? Shoo, this question's got a lot going on. We're going to take it one piece at a time. So we have a three horsepower, 208, three phase motor. For con motor conductors that are of these special conditions, you will use the nameplate FLA rating. But for sizing normal motor conductors, we're going to use our FLC. How we find that is to go to one of those two tables. This is a three-phase motor, so we're going to go to 430.250. If you've bought the tabs from me, we use the Mike Holt tabs, and you're going to use your motor FLC tab to go to table 430 dot 250 and 430.248 that area but we're going to the three phase table which is 430.250 we're going to look back at our question it's a three horsepower 208 so i start on the left hand side of the table until i find and i might have it broke down here also we want to note that for single motors we're going to multiply it by 125 percent First, let's go find our FLC. We start on the left-hand side of the table until we find our horsepower, which is 3. Then we're going to come across the top of that table until we find 208 volts. We're going to come down and find that our FLC is 10.6 amps. 
Now, all we have to do is multiply that 10 by 6 by 125%. Then we're going to be able to go to our primary opacity table and size our conductors. So we go through. We take 10.6 multiplied by 1.25. That gives us 13.25. Now, let's head to our primary opacity table. And let's go size our conductors. So we head to table 310.16 in the 2020 and later or table 310.15B16 in the 2017 and a little bit previous. When we get to our table, we always read the black bold heading to make sure we're in the right table. We're in the ampacity table of 86 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the one we want to be in. We want to make sure that we're in table 310.16 if we're in the 2020 and later. We're going to start on the left-hand side. Actually, we're going to start right there smack dab in the middle but we want to be on the left-hand side of the table, which is the copper side. We need to look back at our question. Are we dealing with copper or aluminum? Well, we're dealing with copper. So we're going to start on the left-hand side of this table, right smack dab in the middle in the 75 degree C column because we're dealing with 75 degree C terminals. What we're going to do now is all we have to do is come down and find a wire that will cover our known amp load. Our known amp load, after all math, is 13.25 amps. We come smack dab down the middle until we find a wire that covers 13.25 amps. It's the first wire we come to. We slide over and we find that it is going to be a 14 gauge wire. Now, I know a lot of you don't wire with 14 at all. But when you are testing in the exam world, or if you're wanting to save your boss some money, you need to know how to use the code. This could easily go on 14 gauge wire as long as we were using THHN, THWN, or some conductor like that. If you're using Romex, you are still fixed to the 60 degree C column. This one didn't specify, so you can assume that we're not using Romex because all other wires we're, we're going to be able to choose from the 75 degree C terminal. But when dealing with Romex, you still have to choose from the 60 degree C. But we're not having any restrictions of Romex in this case, so we're going to choose from the 75 degree C column. And in this case, we're going to select a 14 gauge wire and then we come down and we select a let's take a look at some of the comments here what's going on jc he said 100 let's get to it let's do another one what size copper conductors would you select for a five horsepower 208 volt let me go ahead and move my big head i don't think i have much of anything down in the bottom of these lessons but I like it where you guys can see me just so it's a little more personal. I like to be able to interact with you guys. But let's move my big fat head down to the bottom of the screen. And then let's do the question again. All right. What size copper conductors would you select for a 5 horsepower, 208 volt, 3 phase motor that has a FLA nameplate rating of 15.2 amps terminating to 75 degree C terminals? Remember, we're going to use our motor FLC when we're not dealing with anything special. Is there anything special going on in this question? The answer is no. If we have one of these special situations, we'll actually use the nameplate FLA. We can't forget to multiply this value by 125% after we find it. We're going to head to table 430.250 to find that FLC. When we flip back over there, we're going to start on the left-hand side of the table, and we're going to come down. And we're going to find our horsepower, which in this case is a 5 horsepower motor. We find 5 horsepower. We come over to 208 volts. And we're going to find that we have an FLC of 16.7 amps. But we can't stop there. We have to multiply that value by 125%. All right, so... We're going to multiply that out. We take 16.7 multiplied by 1.25. We could round up to 21 in this case, in my opinion. It's not going to make, well, it, this in this case, it actually does make the difference. In my opinion, and take it for what it is, if you are dealing with amperage and ampacity, if it's 0.49 or less, you can drop it. If it's 0.5 or, or greater, you're going to round up. And in this case, I think it does make the difference of what size wire you use. But let's head to our primary opacity table and find out. 
we head to 310.15B16 or 310.16, depending on what code cycle you're in. To save us saying all that, I'm just going to say our primary opacity table for the rest of the night. The different code cycles have changed the name of the table, but it's still the same content. When we get to our primary opacity table, we look back at our question. We're dealing with copper conductors, and we're in the 75 degree C column. So we're going to be on the left-hand side of the table, but we're going to be right smack dab in the middle. We go to the 75 degree C column, and we find a wire that covers the known load of 21 amps. And in this case, it is going to step us into a larger wire. It would be required to be on a 12-gauge conductor, and we're going to select B. I hope everybody understands what we're doing here. We're sizing the wire that is feeding a motor. So we're running a motor to fill airsoft guns or something like that. I did a really cool one for a guy. He was like a real airsoft buff. And, uh, you know, adult BB guns or toy play BB guns. And uh, they're a lot of fun, I suppose. Uh, I've never got to, to do it, but I've, I've, I've owned some and they're pretty cool. With that being said, I got to work on this guy's house. He was like a guru of this stuff, and he had like a real deal commercial filling machine. And we wired that thing up. We did the overload protection. We did the whole nine yards, and he was a real, uh, he was a real cool dude. With that being said, let's go ahead and move on. What size copper conductors would you select for a 7.5 horsepower, 208-volt, three-phase motor, that has a nameplate FLA rating of 28.6 amps, terminating to 60 degree C terminals. I'm actually going to let you guys do this one. So we're going to set for just a couple minutes, and I'm going to let you guys work this one out. If you're new to the channel, we're excited to have you here. My whole thing is that I'm excited about helping you become as great and as high and as far as you can go in life and in the electrical industry. I want to see you win on all levels, and I'll do anything in my power to help you do that. Whether it's stay up late with you at night and teach you about motors, or if you need me to pray for your family, or you want to call and I'll put me on uh, you know, video chat and help you work through something out in the field, whatever I got to do to help you become as high and as far as you can go, I want to do it. I feel like that's what I'm called to do. And if you're operating inside what you're called to do, you'll always feel at home. And I just feel at home when I'm helping y'all. All right, let's go ahead and get back to the question. I'll give you guys another minute to answer it. If anybody can answer it and drop it down in the comments below, that would be awesome. And we'll have a prize for the per first person who answers it. If you can answer this question, go ahead and do it. It's going to be our last nighttime live session, so we want to make sure that it's cool. I did uh, my first drum lesson today. I really didn't know if I was going to be able to do it uh, in a previous life of mine. I was very heavy into drugs and alcohol, all different kinds of drugs. I know it's hard to believe now, but it's absolutely the truth. And when I first got cleaned up, my motor skills were like <laughs> in bad shape. Not motor skills as far as work goes, but like keeping rhythm. Uh, was well, I don't I don't know what happened. Thankfully, I've gotten it back. So I told the guy he's actually taken my class. He's he's an awesome teacher, awesome drummer. He's taken my in-person electrical class, and now I'm taking his drumming lessons. I said, listen, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this, but we did really good through the first lesson. I said, do you think I'm going to be able to do it? He said, I think you're going to be able to do it, so I'm learning how to play the drums. I'm also taking piano lessons and guitar lessons. So I'll give you guys just another minute. I'm going to go ahead and explain the question. If you want to be the first one to answer it, here's the kicker. You got to answer it before I give the answer, and if you do, uh, he said, I got 10. Let's see where he's at. 10 gauge wire. What size copper conductor? Let's see if he's right. If he's right, 10 gauge. Barry G got it first. I'll tell you what. I saw Andreas first, so I'll give you guys both the prize if you're right. If anyone else wants to answer before and you figured out the answer on your own, the longhand way, I'll go ahead and I'll let you guys get in on that too. What size copper conductors? So first we're going to find out, do we have any special provisions? No, we don't. It's just a normal motor. So we're going to be using our FLC. We need to go to our three-phase table, 430.250, start on the left-hand side, find our horsepower, come down and tee off with our voltage, and we're going to find that our FLC is 24.2 amps. But we can't stop there. We got to multiply that by 125%. We take 24.2, multiply it by 1.25. That's going to give us 30.25 amps. 
in my humble opinion, you're going to round down. You don't have to lock it. I'm cool with it. So we go through, but we have to head to our primary opacity table. We go to our primary opacity table. When we get there, we are going to use the 60 degree C column on the copper side because our question dictates it. Every time I'm looking at a question or a real world scenario, I'm always revisiting it. Horsepower, you know, voltage, terminal rating, copper, all of these things are important. I've got to keep revisiting my question. So we're on the copper side, 60 degree C column. In my humble opinion, it's going to be 10 gauge wire. I've had people dispute me with this on, on the comments. I'm cool with it. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. There's nothing that leads me to believe that if it's 0.49 or less, you would round down. If it's 0.49 or greater, you would round up. Uh, or 0 0.50 or greater, you would round up. If you if you can prove it to me in the code book that you don't, I will gladly, I will gladly lead the way with the new way. But for right now, this is the way, and there's nothing in the code book that I know of that would make me think differently. And we got 10 gauge wire. So Barry and Andres, is that how you say it? Andreas, Andres. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. If I'm pronouncing it right, give me a thumb up, thumbs up. Anyways, both of you guys either get a lifetime membership or the 400X PDF for free. I'm going to have you text me, and I'll put my number in the chat here in a little bit. It's 423-895-3247. Text me your email address and let me know which one you want, and we'll give you guys a lifetime membership. That's a $99 value. Also, if you just signed on tonight... We are actually doing a buy one, give two away for lifetime memberships. I'm going to put, I put the link at the beginning of the chat. And and Andre's cool. Andre's, I hope that's right. If that's the right one, yes. Because I said two or three different names. <laughs> at the top of this chat is the link to buy a lifetime membership. If you buy one tonight, you get to give two away for free, which I think is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and do another one. What size copper conductors would you select for a 10 horsepower, 115 volt, single phase motor that has an FLA nameplate of 95 amps, terminating to 75 degrees C terminals? We're sizing normal motor conductors. We're going through. We're going to multiply that value by 125% when we get there. We're going to go to the single phase table this time. It has an FLC of 100 amps. Take that 100, multiply it by 1.25. That gives us 125 amps. Now we head to our primary opacity table in the 75 degrees C column. We're going to come down and size the conductor. Looks like it needs to be a number one. What was the number? Let me go ahead and give you the number, brother. And you guys can all pull out your phones and save my phone number. If you need help, call me. It's what I do. I only have one rule when you call me, and that is that you don't say I'm sorry for bothering you. If you're bothering me, I won't pick up the call, and I'll call you back. But the only thing you're not allowed to say is sorry for— If After you hear it like five times in a day, you're like, stop, please. Don't say I'm sorry. You're never a bother to me. This is what I do with my life. I know it may be pathetic, but uh, it's not a whole lot. But what I do is help people all around the country— Anytime they need it. And that's kind of what I do. So that's that's part of what I do. One day that calling may change, but right now that's what I do. So the only rule when you call, text, first off, there's two rules. One is, is don't say you're sorry for calling. If it's a bad time, I just won't answer. Second off, make sure you leave a voicemail and a text. You're never a bother because if, if you don't leave voicemail, I'm definitely not calling you back. I don't answer random numbers like anybody else. And definitely leave me a text too so it's on my unread list. But... Let's move on. Now let's go into some special motors. No, nope, that's another one. Same thing. Let's just blow right through this one. It's another one more practice. You can go back, and uh, if you want to take my free version at electricalexamcoach.com, it covers all of this in detail. It's in the week 10 lesson. You can go back over all this. Now let's deal with multiple motors. This is a really simple one. Looks like a complicated question, but it's really not. What size copper conductors would you select for five motors with FLCs of 24 amps, 13 amps, 13 amps, 10 amps, 9 amps, terminating to 60 degrees C terminals? Seems like it's going to be real complicated. It's not. Everybody head to page 303 in the 2017 or page 314 in the 2020. I'm flipping the wrong direction. I think I'm in a 2020 book. 
So I'm going to page 314. We're going to do some strategic highlighting very quickly, and we're going to learn about a new table. This is for several motors, and this is going to be in 430.24. I want you to highlight the word several motors. And then in 430.24, part one, I want you to highlight 125%. And then I want you to highlight the words highest rated motor. What we're going to do is we're going to take 125% of that highest rated motor. Then we're going to add the sum of all the other motors to that. And then that is we're going to size that like one wire. And we're going to size the conductors. We're going to treat it like one motor after that. And then we're going to go size the conductors. I'll explain what I mean. We take that first motor. What's the largest motor? Largest motor is 24 amps, isn't it? We take that motor. Let me go to the next slide. Take that motor, and we multiply it by 125%. Now we take all the other motors and add them together, and then we can't forget to add back that original motor. So we take 45 plus 30 equals 75. Now all we have to do is head to our primary opacity table of 310.15, B16, or 310.16. And we head over there. We're going to be in the 75 degree C column on the copper side. We come down and we find a wire that will, is good for 75 amps. Looks like it's going to be... Let me get my straight edge heads. Looks like it's going to be a number four. Let's make sure I got that right. We go through. We end up on a number three. Let's see here. 75... We're on 60 degree C terminals, y'all. You got to be careful. You can't rest. You can't. You can't get comfortable, man. It'll catch you slipping. We're on 60 degree C terminals. Come down. Number four won't cut it, will it? We got to go to a number three. That's why you always read and reread your question. We were on 60 degree C terminals. That's why before I ever click next on my testing center screen, or before I'm ever satisfied out in the field, I always double check everything. And I should have went through. Thankfully, I had the answer, so I was you know, triggered to go double-check myself. But before you ever go buy number four wire, you better make sure that you know that you know that you're dealing with the right column. And in this case, I should have been over in the 60. We go down, and we're going to plant that on a number three wire. So just be thorough. And how this would have been avoided in the testing center is always read your question twice. Always read all your answers twice and then be very thorough before you click that next button and just reread it all and make sure that you applied it all correctly. So that was a good catch. Red said he left his code book at work and motors is my weakness. Brother, you are in luck if you will go to electricalexamcoach.com, click on the free version. You can watch this entire video absolutely for free in week 10. So if you go to the week 10 video, totally for free, you can watch this whole lesson that I'm teaching right now for free. Let's do another one really quickly. Take our largest motor, multiply it by 125%. Then sum all the small motors together. Make sure we add those numbers together. Then we go to our primary opacity table. This time we're in the 75 degree C column and it looks like we're going to be using that number four that got away from me. And sure enough, we're going to select a four gauge wire. Now I want to take a few minutes and I want to pause on the next part here. If you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments. If you guys are enjoying these live videos, let me know. And we will continue to, to bring them to you. What size copper conductors would you select for a single phase motor? Nameplate rating of 26 amps. That will run a drawbridge for only five minutes at a time, terminating to 60 degree C lugs. All right, there's something special going on here. We don't have a normal motor, do we? Everybody head to 430.22E. You guys can see your page number is there, but the code should not have changed in the 23, but I don't know what page number it's on. Everybody head to 430.22E. We're going to do some strategic highlighting, and we're going to learn about a new table. 430.22E. And when we get over to 430.22E, we're going to be dealing with other than continuous duty motors. The reason that we multiply normal motor conductors by 125% is because they're all naturally considered a continuous load. But not every motor is a continuous load. So what we're going to do is we are going to 
have special provisions here in Part E for motors that are not going to run under continuous load. And in my opinion, out in the real world, only time that it's not considered a continuous load is if it has something limiting how long it's running or any one of the other provisions that were laid out before. Remember, it was uh, low torque motor or high torque motors, low RPM motors, motors that are, uh, are intermittent duty, which is what we're going to cover here, and they have a duty cycle. You push the button and it runs for five minutes and then it stops. It has a hard stop. Or it runs its cycle, which has a certain amount of time, and then it shuts off. Those motors are not continuous duty by nature. Now, you might be able to push that button over and over and get it to do that cycle over and over, but it's not going to continue doing it on, our, on its own. And the codebook has actually made provisions for that. When we get to 430.22e, we're going to do some strategic highlighting. I want you to highlight the words other than continuous. Then I do want you to highlight the words short time, intermittent, periodic, varying duty. And then just highlight the table, which is uh, the, the table uh, numbers, which is 430.22e in that paragraph. Now we're going to head over to table 430.22e. If you're in the 2017 book, it's on the next page over. You can see it. Looks like in the 2020, you have to flip a page. Anytime we come to a table, we always read the black bold heading 430.22e, dealing with duty cycle service. On the left-hand side is going to be the classification of that service. The first little column there going across is short time duty operating valves, raising or lowering a uh, roller. So these are like factories, okay? It raises and then it lowers, and then it raises and then it lowers. Amazon's got, their factories are full of them. They've got a thing, shoots a package in, it literally just drops down, and then another arm shoots it up, and it goes back up, back and forth. These are these type of things. Now, that one may probably would likely run continuously, uh, and we're actually going to learn in this table that there are those that are running continuously, but let's talk about those that are not. Intermittent duty freight and passenger elevators, so they're not running continuously, right? Although they could be if they were continually prompted. Tool heads, pumps, you might have a pump that pumps for 30 seconds and then shuts off for 30 seconds. Runs for 30 seconds and shuts off for 30 seconds. Draw bids, a drawbridge is not going up and down constantly. They take breaks as well. Turntables, for arc welders we're going to head over to 630. And then the final column is periodic duty rolls or in coal handling machines and things alike. So it could be any one of those type machines could fall in this. So first, you're going to classify your motor. Let's look at our question here. Ours is for a drawbridge. Pretty easy classification. Then across the top, it says what kind of motor it's rated. Is this a 5-minute rated motor, a 15-minute rated motor, a 30- to 60-minute rated motor, or is this a continuous duty rated motor? And we have to make sure that we're mindful of that. In this case, ours is a 5-minute rated motor. So we're going to come down here. We're going to start on the left until we find draw bridges, which is in like the second middle column. We're going to come over to five, the five minute column, which is 85%. Now, one thing we have to remember here is we will not use the FLC. We're going to use the FLA. And in this case, it's already listed for us. So all we have to do is take our 26 amps. Let me catch up here. We take our 26 amps. I've got it. Oh, no, I did it. I thought I had it even on another slide. Back in my early days of making slides, I thought I had to take one question and spread it out over three slides. And that was just to help me understand how to teach it. It's one thing to know it. It's another thing to teach it. Now I can take a master level question and literally fit the whole thing on one slide. All right. We went down. We found our demand factor. We take our FLC of 26 amps. We multiply it by 0.85. This gives us a new known load of 22.1 amps. Now we head over to our primary impacity table. We're going to go to the 60 degree C column because it's 60 degree C lugs. And we're going to go down through and we're going to slap this on 22 amps. We're going to slap this on a 10 gauge wire it looks like. And we're going to we're going to select C. All right, y'all. I think we're going to stop on conductors tonight. It's see how late it is. Yes. This is a whole lot of stuff that we've soaked in. I'll continue on with short circuit ground fault protection on another night. 
That way you guys don't have too much going on at once. I think I have one more practice question. Let's go ahead and do it real quick. What size copper conductors would you select three-phase motor? Name plate rating of 40 amps. Short time duty operating valves that will only run for 15 minute intervals using uh, terminating to 75 degree C lugs. We're going to head to 430.22E, the table. We're going to find our motor. Our motor is short time duty operating valves and we're going to be running for 15 minutes. So we come down on the left until we find what our motor's doing. Then we're going to find out and find out its rating, which is a 15 minute rating. In this case, it's 120%. So it's a little bit less than 125, but it's more than 100. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that 40 multiplied by 1.20. That gives us 48 amps. Now we head to our primary opacity table. We're dealing with 75 degree C lugs on the copper side. And we're going to find that we put it on an 8 gauge copper conductor. What we're doing here, so we don't lose sight of it, we're sizing the wire that goes to a motor. Most of the time, it's going to be 125% of that FLC that we found in tables 430.248, not 248, yeah, 430.248 and 430.250. You get so many different table numbers in your head. Every time I teach this lesson, and I'm getting ready to go teach it tomorrow, every time I teach it, when I switch over to short circuit ground fault protection, which is the next uh, part of this, there's one table that's very similar. And I always say 230.52 instead of 430.52. And I can, I'll can i almost bet you that tomorrow I will do it. I want to spend a few minutes with you guys. If you have any questions or anything, let me know. Let me go ahead and get rid of this screen here. And let's make me a little bit larger, not too much. We don't want it too large to handle. And I want to be able to give you guys that link again. Right now, if you buy a lifetime membership, you get to buy one and give three. If you already have a lifetime membership, you literally get to buy one and give three of them away. If you don't have a lifetime membership, you get to keep one and give two of them away. And what's cool about that is, is you don't have to give them away all at once. If you've got some employees or you got some guys that you work with that you want to bless, for $99, you can give it to three of them or keep one for yourself and give two and watch two other people's possibly life get changed and career level up. You can use that link right there to go check it out. Just let me know if you did. You don't have to use the people right away. You can keep them in your pocket. Text me six months from now and say, Coach, or email me either one. Say, Coach, I've got one more membership to give away. This is who I want to give it to. Only thing I need is their email address. I want to give you guys my email address. Electrical code coach, coach at gmail.com. I want to give a shout out to some uh, guys who are killing it and are doing good and I feel like are going to do some good things in the industry. Joel from Electric Pro Academy. I want to give a shout out to him. And I want to give a shout out to the 360 electrician. I don't know if he ever watches my content, but I want to give a shout out to him. He's, he's putting out some good stuff. And if you'll go check out, I think, it, I think it's just the 360 electrician. Go check him out and subscribe. Also go check out Joel with Electric Pro Academy and subscribe to him. And if you are not subscribed to Ryan Jackson's channel, Ryan Jackson is the guru of the gurus. And not only that, he's a super cool, person, personable guy. Next Friday, I'm getting ready to drop me and Ryan's interview. I interviewed Ryan Jackson, one of my personal heroes in the electrical industry. And he is just killing the game while at the same time just being a super cool dude. Really appreciate Ryan Jackson, everything that he's doing. I forgot Nat King, Nat King Code. That's what you said last night. I'm like, I thought you said Nat King Cole. I'm like, oh, that's funny, but I don't get it. He said Nat King Code. I love it. Is that really somebody or is that just something funny? Now I got to YouTube it. Nat King Code. Somebody needs to make a channel called Nat King Code. That would be funny. And I don't even remember who Nat King Cole is. You guys will have to tell me. Is it from like our, uh, is it from like our childhood, from like a book? Nat, Nat King Code. There is somebody called Nat King Code. Bust electrical myths and have some laughs. Any code violations? This dude is real. Does he have a YouTube channel? Oh, man, I got to see this now. You guys got a minute, don't you? I don't think he has a YouTube channel. Let me go back to live stream. That's my favorite page on Facebook, Nat King Code. I'll have to go check that out. Pretty cool, man. Thanks for sharing. All right, y'all. Can't forget 
Uh, Volt Online Academy. Is he good? Okay, good. We like to see everybody. Man, there's another guy that's really good. What is his name? He is like an electrical wizard. I'm going to give him a shout out real quick and maybe get him a few subscribers. Dude, this guy's phenomenal. Let's just go straight to YouTube. What is it? Electrical. I bet he's got a lesson on everything. Electrical Transformers. I want to give this guy a shout out. I'm, here he is. This dude's bad at the bone. His name's Dave Gordon. I'm going to link you up to his page. This guy is phenomenal. Dave, if you watch my channel, buddy, let's do a collaboration. If y'all know Dave personal, tell him the code coach wants to collaborate with him. All right. I could probably just reach out to him. Long story short, check that guy out. Subscribe to his channel. This dude's a boss. I really like him. Really laid back. Just a cool dude. Got a great way of explaining it. Every one of us have our own thing. My thing, hopefully, is that I encourage you, inspire you, and will literally do anything in my personal power to help you win. Hopefully, that separates me from everybody else, but I don't want to be above anybody else. I want to be in conjunction with everybody else. You're not going to learn everything from me. I don't know everything, but if I can give you a little bit, and you take a little bit from Ryan, you take a little bit from 360, you take a little bit from Joel, you take a little bit from, uh, I think his name was, I should know his name by now, Dave Cole. I don't want to mispronounce it. Dave Gordon. You take a little bit from Dave Gordon. You take a little bit from everybody, and you piece that all together, and you become something better than we are, and we'll grab your coattail. We'll get behind you and push you to the top. And then you can reach back if you feel like it, and you can reach down to us, the, the crumbs down here, and maybe bring us up a little bit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But hey, if we can if we could touch as many pieces as possible, I appreciate that. I did post my number, but I will post it again, brother. I maybe never push send. Might never push send. I... But we'll put it again. I would love to see your input on my weekly segment on the electrical myth of the week. All right. Do you have a uh, Do you have a YouTube channel, Willie? You'll have to let me know. Willie Snyder. Let's look Willie up. We're going to put Willie on point. If he's going to jump in and promote his channel, we're going to put him on point right now. Electrical myth of the week. What's his name? Willie Snyder. We're looking Willie Snyder up on live chat. Willie Snyder, S-N-Y-D-E-R. There he is. He's got 13 subscribers. Let's go, let's go subscribe to Willie's channel. No, I ain't going to do that to you, Willie. But if you've got like a podcast or something, and it's a good, clean podcast, and you want me to maybe be on it, I may consider that. You can just shoot me a text, okay? Long story short, I'd love to see you on my weekly segment called The Electrical Myth of the Week. Oh, man, that could be a lot of fun. Let me know next time you're doing it. Maybe I'll come over and hang out. I will definitely, uh, if, as long as you got, I, I tell everybody this, so don't take offense, Willie, or anybody listening. I tell people, any one of y'all, if you've got a good, clean channel, I don't care if it's cooking, baking, or whatever, I'll promote it on my YouTube channel and help you out a little bit if I can. And if you've got a good, clean electrical channel, I will jump on there, and I will help you build as many subscribers as you need. Would love to do a collaboration with you. Whatever I can do to help you, you literally can just call on me. He says, thanks, Coach. Volt Online Academy, High Voltage Live. We would love to have you as a guest. Cool. Volt Online Academy, High Voltage Live. Brother, come on. Let's set it up. Let's go. Red, appreciate y'all. Don't want to ramble or tarry too long, but I do want to let you know that I'm going live on my Bible Coach channel here in 15 minutes. We're going to go ahead and get that link for you guys as well. In about, I take about a 15-minute break. This will be my last late night live that I know of, So, but we'll probably go live earlier in the day. But I do, if you want to do one last late night live with me, you can come on. We're going to do it. You can always go back and watch all the live stuff later too, which is good. We've had some last night, y'all. I'm actually going to share that one with you too. Let me go ahead and share that. If you did not hear last night's Bible Coach... Highly recommend you go check it out. 23 hours ago, this is the one right here. Highly, if you're not 100% satisfied with your marriage, your wife, your husband, if you're a woman, whatever it is, if you're not 100% satisfied, go listen to this message. Get satisfied. Find out what the Bible says about our marriage. Amen, brother. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate you, Andreas. Andreas, hopefully I'm saying that right. Ken, appreciate you. 
Enjoyed the evening classes. I I loved ha- ha- going live on the evenings with y'all. And if we end up doing it later, that's fine. I notice, and you guys, a lot of you have followed me for a long time, I start to slow down after grinding this long. But with that being said, I have no problem. Minecraft said I passed my journeyman test last year thanks to you. Hey, brother, it's thanks to you and God. I just took a small piece in it. And if I could just be that little bit of a spark that helps you go to the next level, that allows you to help somebody else go to the next level, I feel like we did what we're supposed to do. I want to share this link with you guys really quick. Give me about 15 minutes, which would put us at about 11.10 p.m. We're going to go live on this channel. If you're live on this channel and you want to give a thumbs up on this channel or on the next one, that would be great. Not to build me up, but to be able to get the message out to more people that, hey, we're out here, we're encouraging, we're helping, and we want to see you win in the electrical industry. If I can physically help you do it, I'll do it. I extend any power that I've been given to you to help you gain as much power as you can. That way you can turn around and do it for somebody else. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and my bargain is that these videos will add value to you. And you will turn around and add value to others. If there's anything you need from me, you can always email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it.